guys, C.O. Cannon here from Fiction Atlas Press, bringing you another Indie Connection. Today I'd like to tell you about some indie books that you might enjoy if you're a fan of House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. The first book I have for you is called Blue Shadows Fall by Lenore Stutznegger. They wear the faces of your loved ones, but are more beautiful than you could ever imagine. Lovely things shouldn't draw you in and kill you. You almost want them to. 17-year-old Blue Haven, gifted with superhuman sight since birth, dreams of becoming a warrior. Not that anything's happened near the wall since old man Amos was attacked by that beaver. The Shadow Elves, humans infected by a zombie apocalypse-like plague, had died out over the past 150 years, leaving life altogether boring. In her quiet farming village nestled in the shadows of the Smoky Mountains, warriors are no more than a formality. But Blue's unique sight is beginning to show her some troubling things. A suspicious, green-eyed outsider. A strikingly beautiful shadow elf. These visions can't be real, because if they are, that means everyone's been wrong. Dead wrong. They are not the last survivors in the world, and they aren't prepared for the reality Blue's eyes are showing her. The second book I have for you is called Wandering Souls by Angela Van Lampt. In the coastal town of Atlas Cliffs, 17-year-old Drew Harlow has a secret. She can see the dead. She's always seen them, and they've always left her alone. Until now. Drew's final year of high school should have been fun. It should have been carefree. It would have, if not for the accident that took the life of her boyfriend, Shane. Now it's all she can do to keep her head above water. But Drew can't shake the feeling that something was missed. Move forward. Let go. There's no way Shane could have survived. That's what her best friend Piper keeps telling her. Except if Drew can see the dead, why can't she see Shane? Drew embarks on a mission to uncover the secrets of Neptune Point, the scene of Shane's accident. As she digs into the mystery, she exposes unexpected darkness that has been buried for too long. But someone doesn't want the truth to come out, and they will protect it at all costs, even if that means silencing Drew. She cannot turn back now. Choosing to ignore what is in front of her is no longer an option. The third book I have for you is called Changeling by Matt Wesolowski. A missing child, a family in denial, six witnesses, six stories. Which one is true? On Christmas Eve in 1988, seven-year-old Alfie Marsden vanished in the dark Wentshire forest past when his father Sorrel stopped the car to investigate a mysterious knocking sound. No trace of the child nor his remains have ever been found. Alfie Marsden was declared officially dead in 1995. Elusive online journalist Scott King, whose Six Stories podcasts have become an internet sensation, investigates the disappearance, interviewing six witnesses, including Sorrel and his ex-partner, to try to find out what really happened that fateful night. Journeying through the trees of the Wentshire Forest, a place synonymous with strange sightings, and tales of hidden folk who dwell there. He talks to a company that tried and failed to build a development in the forest, and a psychic who claims to know what happened to the little boy. The last book I have for you is called Bones of the Fairy by Janie Lee Simner. The war between humanity and fairy devastated both sides, or so 15-year-old Liza has been told. Nothing has ever been seen or heard from the fairies since, and Liza's world bears the scars of its encounter with magic. Corn resists being harvested, dandelions have thorns, trees move with sinister intention, and the town Liza calls home is surrounded by a forest that threatens to harm all those who wander into it. Still, Liza feels safe. Her father is strong and has protected their town by laying down strict rules. Among them, any trace of magic must be destroyed, no matter where it is found. Then, Liza's sister is born with fairy pale hair, clear as glass, and Liza's father leaves the baby on a hillside to die. When her mother disappears into the forest, and Liza herself discovers she has the fairy ability to see, into the past, into the future, she has no choice but to flee. Liza's quest will take her into fairy and back again, and what she finds along the way may be the key to healing both worlds. Okay, that's all for me this week. I'll see you next week on The Indie Connection. Bye.